right, boys, welcome back. Let's get right to the marquee game uh, of the Sunday slate. I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, House. The games are not spectacular. We do not have a repeat of last Sunday. We had the Ravens and the Steelers, and you had the Bills and the Chiefs, and you had the Chargers and the Bengals. Not as good a card, but that doesn't mean it can't be profitable. doesn't mean we can't have some juicy games along the way. Green Bay laying two and a half against San Francisco to me is a very fascinating line because if there's a team that is going to be more desperate going into the game, it's without question San Francisco coming off that heartbreaking, gut-wrenching loss they had to Seattle. The Packers really should have lost last week, if we're being honest, to the Chicago Bears, got away with one, and added another win. I'm having a really hard time with this game. And I'm having a hard time because, to me, the Packers are not as good as their record. And I don't know where to feel and where to stand with San Francisco, who clearly is not as good as they were a year ago or in years past. I still think there's a different level they can get to as a group. I'll defer on this one. I'm I'm kicking it to you guys. Right now, where do we stand on Niners? Packers, two and a half is the number. So I'm worried. And this would be a spot where I would love to jump on San Francisco. Um, I think the number in favor of Green Bay is a a kind of hedge because the news reports are that Purdy is hurt. Uh, There's a shoulder injury. And we know that Bosa... Uh, I don't know if they've declared him out yet, but I don't. There's no way I we can see him playing based on the status um, that that came out of Sunday. So if Bosa is out and Purdy is limited, um, I'm honestly concerned that Purdy's going to play at all. In which case, this is going to go all the way up to I don't know, dream what four and a half Green Bay by by you know something much much bigger than the the two and a half. So now I it's a stay away because we don't know. Purdy is 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 a tough dude. I think it would be a great spot to be on Green Bay. I think it's right to be. I mean, on 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 San Francisco. I think it's right to be skeptical of 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 Green Bay. I mean, I I'm still waiting. Um, other than the enormous turnover uh, generation that they've had on defense, I don't think we've really seen them. You know, it's not a it's not what I would call a tough defense. And and I'm not, I'm still, you know, looking for opportunities to fade Green Bay. Um, Love, again, still not in the form that we saw the latter half of last season. But with the injury concerns with San Francisco dream, it's a stay away from me. I hate both of these teams. <laughs> like, I wish it was possible that they were playing other opponents so I could bet against both of them. And, you know, the interesting thing about both of these teams is that if you look at red zone touchdown percentage, the 49ers are 26. They're only converting 48% of their 41 red zone attempts. Guess who's 27? The Green Bay Packers. They're converting 48% of their 39 red zone trips. So both of these teams, they can get into the red zone and then they can't punch it in. So when you have that, you have all of these situations where both of these teams continue to stall out. And I think the equalizer here is home foot advantage. The fact that Nick Bosa is hurt. And we saw when Nick Bosa went out of that game last week against the Seattle Seahawks, Geno Smith took over. So if they don't, they're not generating a pass rush. They're in trouble against Jordan Love and this Packers team. And Jordan Love hasn't been particularly well. House, you know, he hit on the key point that Jordan Love hasn't been the quarterback that we saw in the second half of last season. So I think you need to be looking Packers or pass at this point in time, especially when you look at the Brock Purdy injury. But the market has that priced in already. So um, that's where I would be looking. But me personally, I'm not betting on any of these teams. But I will say there's a reason. Right now, you look at the San Francisco 49ers. They are 5-5. Five and five. They're tied for second place in the NFC West, which is basically last place because everybody's tied except for the Arizona Cardinals. There's a reason why on FanDuel Sportsbook, they're, they're minus 210 to miss the postseason. And the schedule is brutal for San Francisco. Absolutely brutal. They have this game coming up. They have a trip to Buffalo coming up. They have a trip to Miami coming up. They play the Lions later on this year. There are a lot of treacherous games for San Francisco to the point where, guys, I remember back in week four, week five, whatever it was, it was a Thursday night game against Seattle, the one in Seattle. 
took the Niners at even money to win the division. I felt great about it until I watched that Sunday game against Seattle. The way I see things now, I don't feel particularly good about San Francisco getting it back on track to go and win this division. Now, we're going to stay in the one. Let me add one thing before we move on. Sure. If you like San Francisco in this game. Bet him to win the division. No, 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 no. No. If you Uh, like San Francisco in this game, you could take the Green Bay Packers plus 360, plus 350 or so on FanDuel Sportsbook to miss the postseason because this is kind of like a de facto playoff game. Whoever loses this game is in trouble because both of these two teams are chasing wild card spots. Now, I know San Francisco can actually win their division, but the way it's going right now with them losing all of their divisional games, this is a wild card playoff game. Fascinating angle, and you're not wrong about that because the Lions are going to win the North, and the tiebreakers for San Francisco are not advantageous. They lost to Arizona already. They split with Seattle. And they lost to the Los Angeles Rams. So it's going to require a whole lot of maneuvering and a whole lot of real good football for the Niners to win a division. You might be onto something there, Raheem. Let's stay in the NFC West. That's going to be the focus here. Sunday night, we got one team that's playing in the NFC West, Raheem. Philadelphia Eagles are red hot. They're 8-2. and two. They have solved a whole lot of the problems that were definitely plaguing them in the early going of the year. The defense has gotten on track. Saquon has been great. A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith are back. You got to lay a small number with the Eagles against a 5-5 five and five Ram team that, remember, two weeks ago on Monday night, lost to the Miami Dolphins, responded with a big Matthew Stafford, Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup offensive explosion against the Patriots. And my lean on this game, despite Philadelphia being as hot as they are, Dream, I think the Rams are going to win. I think McVay is going to have the A-plus game plan ready to go. I think Stafford is going to outperform Jalen Hurts. And I think the Eagles, simply put, are due to lose one here. I'm a believer in that. I could be dead wrong. I know the Eagles are playing great. I like the Rams here. I think the Rams went outright. Wow. I did not expect you to say that. <laughs> I'm stunned. And I know, you know me, I have not exactly been a big Ram guy this year. I think this is a big Ram spot. I just do. I don't like this spot for the Eagles. I don't. I like the Eagles. So these two teams played last year in Los Angeles. That line was four. How do we get to two and a half with a worse Rams team and no Aaron Donald? I, I can't make sense of it. Yeah, my, my issue uh, with the game is, you know, the, the, the handicap in support of the Rams is the Rams with their weapons. I feel like we keep waiting. When are we going to see that game? When's the bust out game? Where we see Puka and Cup, uh, Cooper and 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 Kyron Williams when they when they're all on the same page and Matthew Stafford is firing, we haven't really seen it to me since you know the the latter half of that um, first game loss to the Detroit Lions at the beginning of the season. Like I, I I mean they get it in in fits and starts, but they had every opportunity to um, put away that Patriots team. And I'll be goddamned if I wasn't a little bit nervous with Drake May with the football and the opportunity to drive down the field uh, and, and potentially score against that Rams defense at the end of the game. That game should not have been as close as it was. And it's it's not li- exactly like that New England defense across the metrics and across the eye test is a formidable defense. It's not like a Tennessee situation where you can see certain aspects of the unit, you know, shutting down certain aspects of what another team wants to do. That Patriots defense is, is trash. And and we didn't see that. We didn't see the Rams go leverage that. So I, uh, under other kinds of circumstances would like the case for the Rams. I don't like them coming back cross country from new England with this Eagles team on extra rest, having played against Washington, I think it's a good, sp- it's a it's a fair number and a fair spot for the Eagles. Well, heads up action on this. I like it. I like it. Seems like you guys are aligned with Philadelphia. I'm just telling you, there are certain situations where a team is due for a little humbling. I feel like the Eagles, that game against Washington, they didn't put the game away. But Washington Missed- always plays them tough. They do. And listen, they're a solid team. Washington maybe is on their way to the playoffs this year. I I just don't think that margin of victory house was indicative on how that game was going for three, three and a half quarters. You know what I mean? 
And uh, every now wrong. and again, you you're do. Not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You could get a Sirianni clunker. I, I did, don't be surprised if this is could. a Sirianni clunker. Just remember I said that. Could. Right. We're on record. Now, let's get to the other big game in the NFC West. That's the theme here, uh, kicking off this first slate of picks. House, what a game. Arizona off their bye. They smoked the Jets the last time we saw them. Seattle at home coming off their win of the year and stunning the San Francisco 49ers. You have a line that has the Arizona Cardinals favored by a point and a half. Have fun with this one, House. Cards, Seahawks, what do we think? So I liked it so much more when the Seahawks were favored, which was a you know a couple days this week. There was a minute there where the Seahawks were favored by one. I was like, let me get my T's in. Got to get my T's in. Then I the Arizona plus you know seven taking them from minus uh, plus one up to minus seven was one of my favorite plays of the week. It's flipped over to Arizona, and I think Arizona is is properly uh, favored to be honest, notwithstanding the fact that this is a road game for them. Um, we are in a Jekyll and Hyde position with this Seattle team, and it really boils down to that offensive line. Um, if that offensive line gives Geno any time at all, then Geno's a, a magician. Geno can handle it. Geno went right down the field against San Francisco with a game-winning touchdown drive, but who knows whether or not that, that Seattle offensive line will be up to the challenge and up to the task. Jonathan Gannon's been in his bag all season long. You've got to tip his, your 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 cap. Gannon should be in the in the running for coach of the year. I know he's in the in the top five. He deserves it. Arizona was not forecasted to be anything but a garbage defense. They've been they've been a little bit better than that dream. So uh, I'm I'm leaning towards Arizona as the team coming off the bye week because I just don't trust the Seattle offensive line. It's that simple. I'm taking Seattle and. When I look at the Arizona Cardinals, I, I know they've won four straight games, but look at who they beat and who and when they beat them. So they beat the Chargers. And the Chargers at the time, they truly haven't been tested. I know they went out there and, and beat the Cincinnati Bengals. The offense has improved since then. But that was a very, very close game in which, you know, required them, you know, to, to pull off a game-winning touchdown. Then you beat the Miami Dolphins in a game in which, you know, Tua just came back. And they were lucky to win that one. But the last two games came against the Chicago Bears, who we know they've had a season full of turmoil, and they had the Hail Mary, and they just weren't the same. And then they beat the, the New York Jets. Now you go on bye, and a lot of people could say, well, the bye helps you out. But when you have a four-game winning streak, the last thing you want is to take a break. And, you know, to have a vacation and have guys go home to their wives and to have guys go on vacation and party and do whatever they do. And now you got to come back and face a divisional opponent who is is hungry. And it feels like their defense is slowly starting to get together because they limited the San Francisco 49ers in ways that they've never done during the Brock Purdy era. I mean, Brock Purdy, before that game, he's beat them by an average of 15 points per game. And... You know, Abe Lucas is back on the offensive line. They were able to protect a little bit last week. So if you ask me, I mark these two teams, they're evenly matched. But Seattle was at home. So Seattle with that 12th man, I don't know how the Arizona Cardinals can be favorite on the road here in this spot. Now, these two teams, inter interestingly enough, there's a sandwich spot because the Seahawks play them on Sunday. then. They both go play another team, and then they go play again in Arizona the following week. So I'm going to take Seattle here. Maybe Arizona gets the second one. But Seattle have a home field advantage. I got to take them here in this spot. I'm taking them as well, Raheem. I don't love it because there are concerns about that Seattle offensive line that are a little frightening. But I think the return of DK Metcalf is a game changer for them. I think Seattle is a totally different offensive team when you put Metcalf back in the mix. And – I think the buy actually is a negative here for Arizona. To your point, they're humming. They're firing on all cylinders. Everybody feeling great about things after the back-to-back -back dominant wins. I could see a little rust going into this game. So I'll break the tie. If I smidge, I'll go with Seattle.